Today, we are painting Imperial Fists, or in the German, Imperial Fausts. Haha. -ha. So, uh, these are the Space Marines from the Horus Heresy Betrayal at Kalth set. So, it's uh, 30k Marines. Uh, the paint scheme I'm going for is kind of a, a mix between the 30 and the 40k. Uh, basically, I just do what I want, but uh, we're going to be painting them yellow so we could uh, apply this to you know, either faction or era of faction. Starting off with a nice coat of Tamiya Orange through the airbrush and it's applied in about three coats, light coats total, because uh, I want to get into every single little nook and cranny on the miniature. Next, we switch to Tamiya Lemon Yellow and spray this on in a overhead halo fashion, uh, leaving the orange in some of the lower areas and the recesses. Then we move over to the painting table, and we're applying the highlights now, and this is a, a fairly light mix of Vallejo flat yellow mixed with white. And so applying the highlights with a brush, and these are pretty stark, but uh, that's all part of the plan. Then it's back to the airbrush booth, and I'm spraying on a mix of two different Badger Minotaire glaze, uh, ghost tint paints. Uh, and we're glazing it with a 50-50 mix of orange and yellow. So what this is doing is it's tinting the orange up that we applied. Uh, it's blending it better with the yellow, the other yellow that we applied with the airbrush, and it's also turning that yellow-white we applied with a brush uh, more into the same yellow hue. So we're putting a glaze on all three colors with this orange and yellow mix, and it's blending them all together, and it's also giving a nice richness to the yellow. So this is applied in, I did about two or three coats. Uh, you have, do have to be careful. Applying too much uh, is gonna, we're gonna lose all the colors then, everything's gonna be, uh, become solid yellow and not enough, there's gonna to be too much of a stark contrast between all three of those colors. Before moving on to the decals and all the weathering, I would normally have to apply a, an acrylic gloss coat uh, onto the model. However, the uh, Badger Minotaur ghost tints are actually so glossy, we can skip that step. So moving right on to the decals, and yet round surface shoulder pads, very difficult to uh, apply decals to. So we're using micro set first, uh, placing the decal down, getting in position, and then pressing firmly with an old t-shirt, holding for about 30 seconds, and then waiting about taking off, waiting 30 seconds, checking it, pushing down again, uh, and basically repeating this process back and forth until we can finally bend the decal to shape. Uh, and then after letting it dry for about 10 minutes, uh, applying about three or four coats of micro saw, uh, letting the decal completely dry in between each coat and that will help it uh, suck down to the surface and take care of virtually all the wrinkles and then after all that's dry we apply an acrylic gloss after that to seal everything down permanently. For the shade we are using AK Interactive Rush Streaks and not applying it over the entire model. I didn't want it, I didn't want this project to be um, extremely dirty or uh, you know, messy or chipped or anything like that. So I wanted a somewhat clean look to my Imperial Fist. So we're applying this with a brush and just concentrating mostly on the recesses, uh, not being super careful, but uh, you know, not being completely sloppy with it. And then once it's dry, after about 15 minutes, we clean up the excess using a cotton swab. Uh, you can use a makeup applicator, a sponge makeup applicator for this, which people keep telling me to use. Um, yeah, I have tried them. I don't like them. I do prefer the cotton swab because it's more absorbent and cleans off the uh, excess wash better. 
Uh, it does leave little bits of cotton here and there, but after everything's completely dry, uh, scrub it lightly with a toothbrush and that'll take care of the majority of the little loose threads. For the deep recesses or any areas that need more contrast, uh, we then next use some uh, AK Interactive uh, Enamel Wash Dark Brown. And just applying this between any uh, armored plates or like I said, any uh, small portions that need uh, a little bit more color to them. Uh, and uh, same process as before, letting it dry about 15, 20 minutes and then cleaning it up with a cotton swab. After letting everything dry overnight, I sprayed the model with a dull coat, Tester's Lusterless Flat. Uh, the reason for that is because paint does not stick very well to a glossy surface, so you have an easier time if you gloss coat it first. Uh, the first color we're painting by hand here is Vallejo model color German Gray. And this is going over virtually all the, the small details on the figure. Uh, this is going to be the areas that are going to be, uh, well, black, uh, metallic, or virtually anything else I'm, gonna, I'm undercoating with this color. Um, this is replacing the black you would normally see on Imperial Fist because even though I didn't want this, these models heavily weathered, uh, I went with German Gray instead of black just so it looks more like a faded black. Uh, it was not a very, so it's not a very stark, um, intense black to it. I wanted something just a little bit lighter. To highlight the German Gray, I've added a small amount of Alejo Game Color Steel Gray to that. And on the rounded um, backpack areas, I'm stippling this color on, again so it looks a bit more worn and faded. And on the other areas, I'm applying it standard with a standard brush. And then for the final highlights, mixing in a little bit of Alejo Game Color Glacier Blue to that previous mix, and just doing the edge work on the, uh, the backpack, the shoulder straps, and the gun. For the metal bits, using my spiffy new Vallejo metal color line, and starting off with uh, metal color burnt iron. And then to highlight the metal, we are using Vallejo Metal Color Pale Burnt Metal. We're not done with all the metal bits yet, but we're going to skip ahead. For anything leather or cloth looking, I wanted to paint that brown, and we are starting off with some Vallejo Model Color Leather Brown. Then we highlight the leather brown with some Vallejo Model Color Flat Earth. And then final edge highlights with Vallejo Game Color Plague Brown. Last thing to do is to mix up a thin wash of black ink and apply that not just to the brown areas, but actually going back and applying it to the metal areas and the German gray as well. Uh, save this for the end because I wanted to use the same color in all three and uh, makes a lot more sense doing it all in one go rather than mixing uh, a black ink wash up three separate times. Super simple job on the eyes. It is simply Vallejo model color deep green and then once that's dry applying a very small dot of Vallejo model color flat yellow.
all the small hoses on the models was painted with Vallejo model color dark cadmium red and then highlighted with Vallejo model color flat red. And then finally going back to the yellow armor, wanted a, a bit more highlight to it so I want to do some edging. Uh, this is Vallejo model color white and flat yellow, pretty much the same color we used way back uh, before we applied the Badger Minotaur uh, ghost tints. And uh, applying it just very sparingly just on the edges of the plates on the top areas and uh, that really helps to make the armor really pop. At this point I thought I was done with the model, however after staring at it for a few days I decided it, it needed a little bit more punching up. So uh, despite me not wanting to do a lot of weathering or uh, chips or age on this model, uh, I decided to do it anyway. And so I'm adding some uh, somewhat comical uh, paint chip scratches to the armor. Uh, not going for super realistic because that's not you know the goal I was trying to achieve here. but. Uh, with a very small brush using the tip, applying some, uh, basically the same mix that I just used to highlight the armor, it's uh, flat yellow and white, and applying chips here and there. Uh, somewhat concentrating more on the edges, uh, but just trying to fill things in wherever I think it needs it. And also, I'm trying to clean up any paint mistakes I made along the way, covering it up with the uh, paint chips. The yellow and white is actually the highlight for the paint chips that I'm painting in right now using Vallejo Panzer Ace's Dark Rust. It's easier to paint it in this order rather than doing the Dark, Ruff, dark Rust first and then applying the yellow white. So applying the Dark Rust uh, onto the previous chips and not covering the entire chip but leaving a very thin line at the bottom and that uh, little edge highlight really helps to make the paint chips pop. And with that, we are finally done. The goal for this project was I really didn't want to do a heavily weathered Space Marine. I know a lot of people are doing that with the Horus Heresy models. However, I do a lot of weathering on a lot of stuff that I do, and I wanted to take a break from that and try doing something a lot more clean. Uh, the paint chips, uh, while is weathering, I have tried to apply them in a more cartoony fashion, so it looks somewhat unrealistic, uh, along with the, uh, the glaze from the ghost tints, the Badger Minotaur ghost tints, uh, adds a bit more of a brighter, slightly unusual color to the yellow, which uh, I think really pops, and they came out pretty well. The bases I am going to cover in a separate video just to avoid confusion, but uh, other than that we are done here. Uh, this paint scheme does need a few tweaks, usually when I start painting an army by the time I get to the end of it I've made adjustments because after you do a figure 20 times you see areas that need improvement, so uh, this isn't the final paint scheme on these guys. I will fiddle colors slightly and change some highlight colors. Hopefully. Not so much that I end up having to go back and fix the original first few that I paint, but uh, I think we're off to a good start with our Imperial Fausts, and see you next time.